made the easiest hard decision of my life and decided to throw it all away and say, that's it, I'm gonna become a full-time author. ChatGPT literally just came out, man, and you have a book. I'm gonna lock myself in this room here for three days, and I'm not allowed to leave this room until I've written a book. And so I wanted to make sure if you buy these NFTs, then you're part of my core audience. So therefore you get access to any book that I publish between now and the end of 2026. You just get a free copy of that. I love this world. I love NFTs so much. So the ability for me to be able to leverage that for this book has just been, uh, it's been an absolute delight. Hey everybody, welcome to Picture Freedom. Today, we are joined by Vince Warnock. Vince is the author of ChatGPT for Marketers, a practical guide to using AI for a never-ending stream of fresh and original content ideas and creation. Vince is also a marketing strategist, visibility coach, and podcast host of Chasing the Insights, where each week Vince has a chat with some of the biggest and brightest minds in entrepreneurship, Web3, marketing, and sales. So make sure you stay tuned. Before we get started, we want to remind you guys to go to links.situta.com. That's where we're giving away a bunch of NFTs for free. And those are going to lead to a lot of interesting benefits you're not going to want to miss out on. So let's get to the episode. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast. This is Satudu, and I'm here with my buddies, as always, Joe Nunez and Kwale. I am Darren Levine. Kwa, who are we talking to today? We are talking to the special Vince Warnock. And... Uh... First of all, Vince has his own podcast. He's like way, way like newbies compared to him. He's like 500 podcasts, top 2.5% in his market in podcasts. Uh, he spits out a podcast every day, it sounds like, it seems like. And his and he runs a live Twitter spaces. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just touching the surface, Vince. But before, before I let you talk, I'm just, I just want to give you the... I mean, the accolades of his his work ethics. I mean, it's just like doesn't it doesn't seem like an end. He has a lot of things going on, but it's all centered around, you know, businesses, uh, books, publishing and obviously the Web3 stuff, which is why he's on the on the show. So, uh, but Vince, I, I want you to introduce yourself and we take it from there. Yeah, man. Thanks for that. And yeah, daily podcasts. Uh, basically, I just like being the center of attention, man. So any, anytime someone says, hey, do you want me to speak? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I don't even care what it is. I'll speak there. I'll run my own podcast. I'll do Twitter spaces. Uh, look, I, I have a, a varied background. So I actually trained as an electronic computer and software engineer, got bored with that after about a day or so, and then realized that actually what I'm passionate about is people. And, and marketing and understanding that kind of convergence of people and technology and how that works in the marketing space. Um, so I kind of went through, created and sold a number of businesses, worked on radio as an on-air announcer for a number of years on our top radio station here, uh, and then ended up uh, just off the back of selling one of my largest startups ever, uh, which was Common Ledger. We, we exited for like multi-eight figures after three and a half years of a lot of stress and anxiety, I will say. Um, and then I joined the team at Cigna Insurance and became the chief marketing officer there. So I was there for five years and on paper, honestly, it is the dream job. Like, you know, the pay is ridiculous. The bonuses, the bonuses made me feel like I don't belong because I'm listening to what people are going to do with their bonuses in the C-suite. And I'm going, I don't care about any of that. I don't want a McLaren. I don't want a house in the Hamptons. I don't want any of this. I just want to travel the world with my wife. Does that count? Um, <laughs> but also, I, you know, while I was there, got the results, uh, actually doubled the revenue of a Fortune 100 company while we we're there, which was awesome. Uh, got the accolades, got recognized by Adobe as one of the top 50 marketers in the world. Uh, published my first book when I'm there. And I say all of this because no matter what those accolades were, I was miserable. And I remember sitting in my office, I had the largest office in our building. And I was just sitting in there looking out at the cruise ships coming in the harbor and thinking, I'm so unhappy. And then I felt really guilty about that and really ashamed of the fact that most marketers, particularly in this part of the world, this is their dream job. This is what they would aspire to, you know, is to be the chief marketing officer in a Fortune 100. And here I was having this and I felt like I was being ungrateful because there's nothing wrong with the job. It was a good company, good job, but I was really unfulfilled. And that was the kind of key moment for me is realizing that and going, hey, I need to get back to what I'm really passionate about, which is helping people. Uh, I need to get back to uh, helping entrepreneurs because I've got such a soft spot for entrepreneurship. I've been an entrepreneur since I was like 11 years old. So I wanted to get back to all of that. So I made the easiest hard decision in my life uh, pre-COVID and decided to throw it all away and say, that's it. I'm going to become a full-time author. 
which uh, when you have ADHD, by the way, is not a great career choice. Uh, writing one book full time, <laughs> I went crazy after like about, I think a day. Um, so that one book turned into many, uh, turned into launching a publishing company, turned into launching the podcast and doing a lot of the work I'm doing in the NFT space and the Web3 space. And of course, uh, with my podcast and things and helping entrepreneurs. So yeah, so that's kind of brought me to where I am now, I guess. Wow. You know what? It's, it's, I could tell that you love your job. You know, it's just your, the energy that you have and yeah. the, your speed of communications is ridiculous too. And, um, and, but, you know, before we get into that, you know, okay, there's a lot of people that could relate to workers hating their jobs or where it is, uh, you know, yeah. how, how do you guide someone to go through that? It, that's going through that process. I, I think one of the key things Kwa, is to, to actually understand why you're unhappy there and, for me, I, I remember coming home. I, I literally was writing a list. You know, that stuff I was telling you with the awards and all this kind of thing, I was literally writing it on paper to convince myself that I should be grateful for what I've got and I should be happy. And it wasn't until I came home and my wife just kind of looked at me and just went, you're not happy there, are you? And I went, no. And she goes, do we need to make a change? And I went, yeah. Wow. And it was that point where I had to kind of sit down and go, why am I unhappy here? What is it about this? Is it the toxicity? Because let's face it, most corporates are very toxic environments anyway um is it you know like is it the type of work i'm working on is it the you know the 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 team i'm working with but for me it got down to realizing that i'm not helping people when you're a c-suite executive in a you know fortune 100 company everybody to you is a number or a dollar sign i i don't get that sense of fulfillment i used to have with my previous startups or previous companies where i'm directly interacting with somebody and seeing that look on their face when they get it seeing that look mm -hmm. on their face when you unlock something for them i'm like that's what i'm passionate about so for me it was that process of sitting down going why am i unhappy here what is it about this that really is making me feel unfilled uh, unfulfilled and then from that what does fulfillment look like what is it that i'm passionate about what is it that that drives me and motivates me and i think if you go through that process um I was going to say, it'll make life very clear for you, but also I think most people will probably leave corporate. So they'll probably yeah. go off and try and do their own thing as well. No, that's a, that's a, that's amazing advice. Um, so I don't, I mean, I could stay on this topic forever, but today I want to talk about your book. You know, uh, I mean, yeah. Chat GSB literally just came out, man, and you have a book. Yeah. <laughs> and and, and from, yeah. from our side conversation you didn't use chat gbt to write this book because you are no, a writer no. yourself like that so just tell us about this book yeah sure well the the book i really wanted to write a book. i have been using chat gbt or even just gpt itself uh using playground and some of the other black background tools for for a while now and just been playing around with these things and could start to see the potential for it and it wasn't until um, ChatGPT kind of first came out. I sat down with one of my clients. She was having, she was having a huge amount of problem coming up with uh, content ideas. Um, she's in a very niche industry. And she said to me, "Look, I, I want to write some more blog posts, but I think I've kind of saturated every topic that's out there." And I went, "Oh no, you haven't." <laughs> so, so I was going to take it down there, my usual kind of route of using things like Answer the Public and Question DB and all these tools to understand what people are searching for. Then I thought, actually. Let's take a shortcut. So threw into threw it into ChatGPT and said, "Look, come up with ten different uh, headlines or catchy headlines for blog post topics about X, you know, which was her niche market." And it came back with a bunch of results, and she was like, "Wow, this is pretty cool." And I said, "Oh no, no, we, we've we've only scratched the surface. Let's have some fun here." So I, I showed it. We we did an hour long session, and I showed you how to then iterate that and say, "Okay, can you?" And we just replied and said, "Can you make them more exciting?" So came back and rewrote those headlines. And all of a sudden within there was like, actually, there are a whole pile of usable ones. So we got it to write some more and write some more. We came up with, in this hour-long session, 15 different long, long form blog post ideas. But then I said, let's pick one of those. Let's pick headline number six. And we just asked it to write an outline for a long form blog post about that particular topic. And it came up, gave an outline. Then we said, can you give us examples for each of the different subtopics within there? And it did. She went away, wrote that within 10 minutes. She wrote this long form blog post. We put it back into chat GPT and said, what else should we add? You know, just, just tell us what else should we add to make this a good blog post? And it came back and said, well, if you're going to use this for SEO, uh, I would recommend using a FAQ section at the bottom of this. And by the way, here are 10 FAQs you can use in this blog post. And they were excellent FAQs. So we thought, 
we're on to something here. So then we used it within that hour session. We then used it to create a lead magnet. So we just said to it, based on that blog post, create a checklist that we can use as a lead magnet to entice people to want to go in the process of signing up for a webinar. Uh, we got it to write an email sequence of five emails, five different social posts you can use to promote both the lead magnet and then the webinar, and then a bunch of Twitter posts and things as well. And in the end, we even turned it into an email course. All of that within an hour. And that look on her face of going, oh my goodness, I don't have to stress about all this stuff anymore. I can focus on what I'm really good at, which is the detail part of this content. And the stuff that usually gets me to sit in front of the computer with a flashing blinker, a blinking cursor just going, I got nothing, that's now in the past. So, so that was the moment I realized I need to unlock this for a lot more people as well. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff out there about ChatGPT. But I also decided that I was going to challenge myself and with my business, I have a publishing company, uh, publishes all my books, it does a lot of ghost publishing. So we publish on behalf of the likes of Wiley and Simon Schuster and places like that. We do all the hard work in the background. They stick their stamp on it, we get paid for it, but we get paid very well, so we can't complain. But I wanted to kind of build our, our um, publishing company up this year and, and get a bit more exposure for it. But then on the other side of that, I've got all my the entrepreneurs that I'm, I'm coaching and, and marketing and helping them to build their business. And a lot of them, I say to them, look, becoming an author is one of the most powerful thought leadership platforms that you can have. It really is. It opens so many doors for you. It'll get you booked on conferences. It'll get you in the, in the door with prospective clients. It'll help you to upset, like give value to your current clients, all of these kind of things. So to them, though, the problem is they look at that and go, writing a book, that seems really stressful and really overwhelming. Yeah, I'm There's one of those a lot guys. Of work in I'm one book. of those guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're going to write a book, but <laughs> trust me on that one. Um, so what I did was I said, well, I'm going to remove that overwhelm feeling for them. I knew I was launching. I've got an a author's launch pad, which is a mastermind that I'm launching very shortly. Um, so I thought to build up to that, I'm going to, as a birthday treat for myself, because January is my birthday month, I'm going to lock myself in this room here for three days. It was a long weekend and I'm not allowed to leave this room until I've written a book from start to finish. Um, and I can tell you now, I do not advise anybody ever do that ever again. <laughs> it was really I, would, I just stressful. want to know what your diet was during those three days. <laughs> um, I, my diet was relatively healthy. A lot of almonds, uh, a lot of dried fruit and things like that as well. And a lot of drinking water. Uh, no coffee. I had to come off coffee. Otherwise you crash while you're doing it. Mm. I also, by the way, you know, full disclosure, I have a genetic uh, mutation. So I only sleep four hours a night, which is very advantageous when you're trying to do something like this. But obviously not everybody is wow. blessed or cursed with that mutation, <laughs> whatever you want to think of it as. Um, so, but yeah, so I wrote the book within those three days just to prove that it can be done. Um, and then also even change the methodology of how I launched the book as well to see if I can, I, I can maximize for my clients. I wanted a way to go, hey, I want to maximize the profits you can make on this. Uh, by driving sales through you, but still hit that bestseller status uh, on Amazon. And we hit bestseller within an hour, which was one of those moments of going, phew, turns out I do actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, wow. It was a nice validation yeah. of all the hard work, I can tell you. So yeah, so that was the, that was the motivation behind the book and how I came out with it so quickly. But in um, something you said before, uh, Kwa, about not using chat GPT to write the book, that is very true. There is responses in there from ChatGPT though, because what I wanted to do is make the book very practical for people. So in there, I say things like, okay, here are some prompt examples that we can use to get the most out of this. And here's some of the responses that you would get from ChatGPT. And we literally copy and paste in those. But now look what happens when we change the adjectives on these and we actually get it to rewrite these things based on these different styles or your own style, et cetera. And then I gave the examples of those. So there is some, mm. there is some examples in there from ChatGPT. It's not 100% my words, but I wrote the bulk of the book for sure. You know, I, I, I learned about ChatGPT because of Joe and then they had told me about it. And I, the minute yep. I touched it, I was like, okay, uh, Google what? <laughs> yeah. you know i mean i, I want to know your thoughts about this because you know mm -hmm. i we we did a, a prior podcast and i got some engagement out of it and they said uh no ai is not for me uh i'm not touching it for my business no it's you know yeah. you know we don't need this in our life it's like there's a big resistance to something like this yeah and here i am embracing it i'm like sharing it to me you know like, it was like it's, it's it's but then not at the level that you're talking about so i'm very interested in that book yeah. and to see your strategies and how you use it but i mean what are your thoughts about 
the future right now with this? Oh, my goodness. Um, the acceleration that we're seeing at the moment, which a lot of that has come from, despite the fact we, we slam Google on these things, Google actually did uh, create a lot of the technology that ChatGPT is using, that MidJourney is using, that all these different AI systems you're seeing at the moment are using. Um, but it has just taken a huge step jump uh, towards uh, a whole new world, basically, particularly for entrepreneurs. And there are a lot of people, you're right, and ideally with this as well, a lot of people that go, oh, AI is not for me. I don't want to go anywhere near it. And saying that, they don't realize AI is everywhere and they're already using <laughs> yeah. it in 90% of the tools that they've got anyway. But yeah. the other thing too is we saw this with uh, the internet. I still remember when the internet first came out, man. We had one of the first connections between New Zealand and we actually had a connection between CIT, where I trained, and MIT. Um, and first thing, by the way, first thing they ever sent to us over the internet was a rude picture. So typical nerds. But anyway, um, so I, just, I still remember when that was out and I was building websites in, in original HTML and people were like, why? Why would anyone do this? No one's going to put their information online. Why would they go and look on this World Wide Web when they can actually walk down to the corner store and actually get the information they need there? Um, so people always stick their head <laughs> in the sand. They're afraid of change because yeah. change means they need to learn and change means they need to adapt. Mm. So they resist it purely based on those principles. Um, it's also probably pretty scary for them. Yeah, we're, we're seeing, so as well as chat GPT, we're seeing um, in, you know generative image uh, creation. So for us as entrepreneurs and marketers, this is a game changer. Like we used to have to pay a huge amount of money for stock photos and try and you know, you'd spend three or four hours trying to find the, the right photo. And even when you chose the right one to go with your blog post or on your website, you were like, oh, there's got to be a better one out there. Mm -hmm. And you just doubt yourself. But now you can literally use something like MidJourney or Blue Willow or Instant Art or one of these systems. Go in there, prompt it, tell it what you want, and it'll create an image. Uh, and you play around with that a bit. And then suddenly you've got a stock image that is completely unique. That is unlike nobody will have that exact image. You can use that commercially free and things like that as well. Plus, we've got software at the moment uh, that we're using that uh, basically mimics your handwriting. So you can actually write an entire book in your handwriting. Wow. And the way it does it isn't just, it's not like a font that copies, you know, the way you write an E, the way you write a T, those kind of things. It actually bases it on where it is within the word where it is within a paragraph, what pressure you would put on the page at that point, how emotive the word is. So therefore, if it's a really emotive word, you're probably pressing a lot harder versus something that was you know, just a joining word where it'll be a lot lighter. Um, and it can just completely duplicate your writing style, which is insane. And, and that's just scratching the surface. Yeah. Why is just really waiting for the chip to go in the head so that you could just have the thoughts and it just transfers? No, we don't have to talk to him. We just have to think. <laughs> Oh, I know just, <laughs> just think the book. I was going to say, not not talking to everyone. That's just social media, man. Like, we're living our bubbles now. But the way <laughs> that you used your, human beings. the way that you used it to help write your book is, it's a lot like I was listening to a podcast this morning on my commute about how it's basically able to replace a media company's whole writing room because usually they have a whole people yeah. sitting around a table. They all say, okay, we got to come up with five ideas for this, three ideas for that, and then all come up with ideas yeah. and then come together again. Chat GPT effectively is that in an instant yeah. versus having to go into your room, schedule a meeting and be like, okay, everybody, shipping your ideas. Well, this thing can help with that step yeah, of things. The problem with that though, is that you have less people to blame with the bad idea. <laughs> right. So, so, so chat GP yeah. scapegoat? Vince, so I yeah. mean, you're, you're a top level CMO uh, level type of guy over here. And I mean, what are you, I mean, this must be so scary to people that, because this is a job we place for a lot of people from copy to copywriters to how about SEO yeah. optimizers? You know, I, I I recently got someone from LinkedIn said, Hey, I could write your SEO blogs and you know, I could do your blogs, yeah. your articles and stuff. I was like, you're too late. You're too late. <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> well, kind of, I mean, look, um, the, okay. Here's a very interesting one for you. So Google, uh, when it comes to SEO has always stated in their terms and conditions that, if you use AI to write your content, you'll be penalized. Um, so that's something people aren't aware of. However, Google has just shifted that. And they literally, we asked directly, asked a Google engineer and said, look, you know, are, do you penalize based on AI? And they went, no, not really, but kind of. And what they mean by that is they're only going to penalize you if you're using AI to game the system. So in other words, if you're using AI to write 200 articles and putting them all out at the same time to try and flood Google and try and get this kind of, you know, uh, SEO response, 
then sure, you're going to be penalized. But using uh, AI to actually complement what you're doing, that's not going to penalize you at all. And the thing is, I do see a lot of people, content writers, particularly and copywriters, they are really worried about AI. They shouldn't be, though. Because the thing is, the, the key principle with any of these systems is it doesn't replace you, it enhances you. And even as entrepreneurs, like let's face it, a, a solopreneur or a coach that's sitting there going, okay, I need to come up with ideas. Using something like ChatGPT as an ideation tool is going to next level you know, the business for you because you now all that time that you were spent sitting there trying to come up with ideas, you're working with this tool and it's helping to unlock those ideas for you. And with the writing, it's not, you know, you're not just going to take the writing directly from chat GBT and throw that onto social media. It doesn't work that way. You have to tweak it to your, yeah, there's a level your tone, of, your of voice, curation, all those kinds right? of things. Curation. Yeah. Is... Exactly, exactly. So, so if a content creator was to click to this, mm. they'll realize that they should be using chat GBT to reach more people and write their content a lot quicker and do all this stuff a lot faster. So therefore they can actually charge less for it put it out there and make more money so 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 vince um before before i know we're, 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 we're about to wrap soon but i want to talk about yeah where you're selling this at. i know you're using it for as an nft on satudu platform so thank you for that i am indeed um, huge fan of satudu yeah <laughs> and uh so talk about where you think how this how this is working out what's the mechanism with nfts and your books and what you're offering yeah well, look, I wanted to I wanted to do this three ways. So I wanted to obviously anyone can buy this on Amazon. They can buy it on you know Barnes and Nobles or those kind of places. Uh, they can go there and purchase the book there. Um, but that majorly profits some pretty large players out there. So I also wanted another way that they could access this, so they can buy it directly off me. And we use fulfillment through the back end of Google, which uh, so Amazon, which means that we actually make more money off that. So more profit goes to us as creators rather than you know obviously these big platforms. But then we wanted a way to add more value to it. And that's where the NFT comes in. So putting the uh, chat GPT for a marketer's NFT up there obviously gets you a free copy of the ebook for this. But also I wanted to add more value. I'm producing uh, five or publishing five books this year. Um, I've got a whole pile that I've already pre-written that I've been waiting for this year to kind of launch. And I've got some other ones that I'm writing this year, including a chat GPT for SEO, a whole article, a whole book on that. Wow. Um, so I wanted to make sure if you buy these NFTs, then you're part of my core audience. So therefore, you get access to those books. In fact, any book that I, pr I publish between now and the end of 2026, you just get a free copy of that. Oh, that's Plus, amazing. also wanted to take it to the next level and go, you know what? I'm going to make it that anybody who has the NFT, they get a, a free strategy call with me every year until the end of 2026. I saw, so I we're saw gonna that. Do a full yeah. Hour yeah. Yeah, well, a full hour-long session with me where we can basically map out a, a roadmap for you, map out something really clear where you can go, okay, this is where I need to head for my business or this is where I need to shift my branding. This is how I need to bring neuromarketing into what I do, those kind of things. So I just want to make it so that I can add more value to people. I'm hugely bullish on NFTs, man. I, I love this world. I love NFTs so much. So the ability for me to be able to leverage that for this book has just been, uh, it's been an absolute delight. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, now, now I got to dig into this this guy over here. It's got a lot of interesting stuff. You know, you're, the, the the example of this is like you know, I love the utility of this NFT, and it's uh, you. Yeah. I think you price it way more reasonable than anything, in my opinion. Um, you're limiting yep. your supply, though, right? And so, yep. what's the max supply you're thinking about for your NFTs? Uh, fifteen of this particular run here. Um, so only fifteen of these. They're priced at. Well, I can't even remember what I priced. I think fifty-four Matic or something like that. So, mm, yes. uh, under seventy dollars essentially US. Yep. Um, but I wanted to do this as a way to give back. Obviously, uh, if I if I didn't limit it, then my entire time is going to be spent doing <laughs> strategy calls with people throughout the year. Uh, that's not <laughs> profitable. Um, so I just wanted to make sure it was something I could use to give back to the NFT community, uh, and at the same time be able to help you know Absolutely. fifteen different people. And when they pick when when they make the purchase for the NFT, what what are they expect? Are they going to go do a registration? So then, so you know how yep. does that work? So they they go to they go to a landing page where they can download the book. Uh, so a Dropbox where they can download the book, but within there's also a link for them to be able to book that strategy call with me. Beautiful, beautiful. Cool. Well, Vince, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to be your first buyer for on the nft side of things <laughs> because you've you, you're a best-selling book so i want to I grab that stuff and then we're going to be um 
look, this the NFTs we've been talking about is more than digital art, in my opinion. This is a unlocking yeah. of utilities, and this is a great example of it. So kudos to you for making this thing happen. Oh, kudos for you guys for giving us the platform to make it happen as well. Like, and, uh, seriously, yeah. as I said, very bullish on NFTs, even more bullish on Satudu. I love it. Um, Vince, um, let the audience know before we go uh, where how, how they follow you and everything else. Uh, easiest way is go to chasingtheinsights.com. That's my that's my website. It's the home of my podcast. It's the home of my books. It's the home of everything. So uh, you'll also see links there to everywhere you can connect with me on social. I love meeting new people. So just reach out, say hi, uh, and let's get in each other's world. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Vince. Thank you, Vince. <laughs> cool. Thanks, everyone. Good to see you guys. Cheers. Thanks for watching Picture Freedom. If you like what you see and want to keep up to date with us, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell on our channel to check out all our content. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next episode.